No, that's just the thing to hold it. <laughs> well, why don't you turn to the person next to you, if there's a person next to you, and tell them that Jesus is the light of the world. Go on, tell them. Turn to the person next to you, tell them. Jesus is the light of your world. Jesus is the light of your world. Jesus is the light of my world. Yeah? Hallelujah. Jesus is the light of our world. You know that, don't you? Jesus. Amazing. Amazing God. Hallelujah. So it's a great um, <laughs> it's a great time of the year, isn't it? If you're, if you're a Christian, if you're born again. And uh, if you believe in Jesus, it's good. It's good. I, I wonder if you ever talk, do you ever talk to yourself? Yes, all the time. Yeah, do you ever talk to you all the time? Isn't it? And why don't you just say something to yourself now and say, Yeah, that's good. Jesus is the light of my world. Jesus is the light of my world. Yeah, yeah imagine you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Jesus is the light of my world, your world, mm. your world, my world. Hallelujah. Jesus. You know, speaking Jesus over us is wonderful. And, uh, and so I just thought, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, in the beginning. John starts his Gospel off a little bit different than Luke and Matthew and Mark. Mark didn't even mention any of the birth of Jesus. But uh, Matthew, uh, Luke comes in at a different angle, more like from a Gentile perspective, and Matthew comes in from a Jewish perspective, and John sort of comes in the middle and explains that Jesus is the light of the world. It's great if you just look at them and realise that the whole gospel, the whole word of God is so powerful to get the message across to us. And it's great. And John says that. He says, the word was with God and the word was God. God. Hallelujah. The word was God. The word is talking about Jesus. The word Jesus is God. Hallelujah. He's God in flesh. God in flesh. And he says, listen, he said in verse 2, he was with God in the beginning. You see, Jesus was with God in the beginning. You know when he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, let us make man. Mm -hmm. Jesus was there. Yes. Jesus was well, there. Said, John says, through him all things were made. Yes. So when God spoke light into darkness, Jesus was there. When God spoke the trees and the animals and the fish and all creation, Jesus was there. Amen. He said, through him. The Word. All things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. This is Jesus. That's right. Not a baby in a manger. That's right. Jesus, our Saviour. This right. Jesus, He grew up. <laughs> Christmas time, we can sometimes leave Him in a manger. That's right. He grew up yeah. with the donkey and the shepherds and the sheep and the wise men. But no, Jesus, He grew up. It says, with Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Jesus is the light of your world. And the light of my world. That's the message of Jesus Christmas this time. That Jesus is the light. Amen? And that's something to get encouraged about. Something to get excited about. He's the light. And listen to this. He said, the light shines in the darkness. Okay. So the light, so when we invite Jesus into our situations, and that was probably a pretty dark place, Fiona, at the side of the motorway. You probably felt in a pretty dark place there, but then Jesus shone light into that place. Uh, amazing, wonderful answer to prayer. This is our God. And whatever, sometimes we can, uh, we can find a, a sickness or a, or a situation in our work or, I don't know, dark places, they come against us sometimes, don't they? But Jesus... It's the light. I bought myself last Friday. <clears throat> I had a right wobble. But then I realised that Jesus, Jesus is the Lord, is Lord of my Amen. life and everything that I do. And so it says, darkness has not overcome it. Yes. It's important. Uh, the, the light shines in the darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. In other words, darkness can never win. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. It can never win. Yeah. He's a, he's a loser, always will be a loser, and can never win. He'll have a go at winning, but he can never win. And, but he'll only win over us 
if we forget that Jesus is our light. Yes. That we need to proclaim that Jesus, I'm going to make Jesus is the light of my life. Yes. This is, this is what God wants to tell us today. That Jesus, there's a scripture up here, John 8, it says again, Jesus spoke to them. I am the light of the world, Jesus said. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. Whoever follows me. Whoever follows me. Whoever follows me. Yes, hallelujah. In other words, if you don't follow Jesus, you'll walk in darkness. Yeah, that's right. But if you follow Jesus, it says you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. Amen? Hallelujah. Because why? Because darkness cannot overcome it. John said. And so let's just have a look at the way in Matthew, because in Matthew uh, chapter 2, it's, uh, it's Matthew's account really of what happened when Jesus was born. And we don't often go into Matthew because there's some not nice stuff, there's some darkness in there. We often quite go through the, the loop point, don't we, where the, the shepherds on the, uh, watching the flocks at night and the angel, etc. We go through that, don't we? So uh, in Matthew chapter 2, start at verse 1, it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, King Herod, right, was a dark king. Yes. He was full of darkness. Yes. He was full of darkness. And it says that wise men came from the east, and they said to her, uh, Where, where's the one that's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star, and when it rose, uh, we thought, you know, we're going to follow that, and we've come to worship him. So you see, they recognised something amazing. We've come to worship him. And so when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. You see, he was king. What do you mean, there's another king? I'm king. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it's all about me. That's right. I'm king. <clears throat> there can't be another king. So he said, he called all the people's chiefs, priests, and teachers of the Lord. He asked them, where's the Messiah going to be born? Where will he be born? They said, in Bethlehem, in Judah. They replied, this is what the prophets read. And the prophets, and we'll read in, in, in the prophecies of the birth of Jesus, so many prophecies of the birth of Jesus. said, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. See, Bethlehem was a small little place. A small town, Bethlehem. It's quite interesting how God uh, takes the greatest things out of the smallest things. Yes, hallelujah. You know, there's a, it's a scripture that says, don't neglect uh, the day of small beginnings. That's it, thank you. Don't regret the day of small beginnings. Yeah. We start off small. You know, quite often it's quite interesting that that, that was in what comes to mind is actually this business. When I, when I think yeah. of where we started in 1986, wow. at very small beginnings, you know. I've been made redundant. Uh, I had uh, some tax money saved up that I was supposed to pay the tax man. And um, we used that, and me and a friend called Clive, we used that money. And with that money, we bought materials enough for one order to fulfill. We had one order. One order we had to start with. Yeah. One sweep. Yeah. And the strange thing was, it was it was a Chesterfield, but it was in drill and it wasn't even leather. <laughs> not even leather. And we got given the drill on because we only had enough to buy the frames and the phones, so it was really small Hallelujah. beginnings. And we made that Chesterfield. And the funny thing was, we'd never made a Chesterfield in drill on before. <laughs> so that was a really small beginning. That's how we started, and we sold that. And with the money and the profit of that, we bought enough to make two orders. And that's how it started, small beginnings. And, and the other day I was looking around and I was thinking, oh my goodness, how did this happen? You know, when I were up to my eyes in furniture on Friday, having a good wobble, <laughs> thinking, what am I doing? Hallelujah. And I thought, my word, how, God, how you've done, what you've done here is yes, remarkable. Hallelujah. It's remarkable what God's done in this, uh, in this place. And God will do similar things in your life and in my life. God does amazing things if we would just trust him and follow him. It said in verse 7, Herod called the wise men secretly and found them. And, and he found out from the exact time the star appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Okay, go and search carefully the child. When you find him, come and tell me, because I want to worship him. Not. <laughs> he didn't want to worship him. No. He wanted to kill him. Yeah. He wanted to take him off the face of the earth. Remember, he's a dark king. They'd heard that, the king. They, so they went on the way and the star they'd seen... 
went ahead of them and he stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, the star stop, they were overjoyed. So they came to the child, his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And then they opened treasures of present, presented them with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And that was the situation. So then they're thinking, right, we need to go back and tell the king. However, they decided to go to sleep that night. And he said, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Darkness cannot overcome it. That's right. Whatever you're going through in life, darkness cannot overcome you. Because you have the light of the world. Yeah. And darkness cannot overcome it. Said so when they'd gone, uh, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in the dream, you see. So the angel came to the wise men. See, God's all over it. Miracle after miracle after miracle in this amazing story of the birth of Jesus Christ. Not only his birth, but his survival. When he was born, he needed to survive. Mm. And God had to help him survive. And he sent his angels. And God wants us to survive. When we're born again, and, and sometimes darkness gets the better of us and can almost trip us up. Anybody yeah, almost yeah, gone off? Yeah. Anybody almost thought, thrown the towel in that city? I've had enough, I'm out of here. Yeah. Every one of us probably. Yeah. Yeah. See, the darkness came so close, but cannot overcome it. Because the light of the world is in us. So even though it seems we're on our last leg, hanging on for dear life with our fingernails. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, God, yeah. one hand, <laughs> one finger out. <laughs> God comes. So, and, and this was pretty much the story here because it says, listen, it said, when they'd gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. He said, get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until I tell you because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. The darkness. He's after him. Mm. He's after the light. Wants to kill him. So Joseph got up. He said he got up. And he took the child and his mother in the night, during the night. You've got to put yourself in Joseph and Mary's shoes, okay? Yeah. Mary's just had the baby. All right? And Joseph, so they're all ready. Imagine if you just had a baby. And then you've got to get up in the middle of the night and you've got to escape. You've got to get out of there. You've got to go. You've got to go. He left for Egypt. And it wouldn't have been a short journey. And it was at night. God is involved in everything. God's involved. He said, where he stayed, uh, I said that, and he stayed in Egypt until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. Yes. Out of Egypt I called my son. He said, Herod realised that he'd been outwitted, so he doesn't finish there, because look what Herod did. We kind of like, we kind of uh, get like a fast forward bit there, but then Matthew wants us to understand actually what really, really happened, and he tells it here. He said, Herod realised that the wise man uh, had outwitted him, and he was furious. Yes. And he gave orders yeah. to kill all the boys in Bethlehem. Imagine that, right? Think about this. All the boys in Bethlehem and in the area who were two years old and under, to kill them, to slay them. Looking for the, putting out the light. It says, uh, in, the, in accordance with the time he had learned from the wise men. And this was a prophecy that was fulfilled in Jeremiah. That's right. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Amazing how these things happen. Yeah. And God, he just has to protect and constantly send his angels. The darkness doesn't stop. It's rampaging through our earth. earth. Always has been, always will be, until Jesus comes again. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But when we have the light in us anyway, he can't put, you, he can't put it out. He can't, Hallelujah. he can't stop you. Hallelujah. And we all have questions. Well, why did God let that happen? Don't we? I've had that question. Why, do, why is God doing this? Yeah. And why is God doing that? We all have these questions. We all have these questions. But that's where our faith comes in. We just have to trust the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We just have to trust that Jesus said, 
I'm going to prepare a place for you. Yeah. If it wasn't so, would I not have told you? That's what Jesus said. He said, after her had died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. He said, get up. Take the child and his mother. Go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. A day. So an angel came again to Joseph. Okay, you can go back now, Joseph. It's time to go back. So it says, Joseph, he got up and he took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. Now Israel is quite a vast area, yep. quite, a, quite a big area. So put yourself in Joseph's shoes. Well, where am I going to go? <laughs> where do I go? And in verse 22, it says, see, Joseph was a bit of a smart guy, you know. He was a smart guy. Yeah. God wanted to choose him on for no reason. Mm. He was smart. Because Joseph, he heard that our, our I don't know how you say it, our Kalos, or our Kalos, let's say our Kalos, was reigning in Judea. He was the son of Herod, uh, in place of his father Herod. And Joseph said he was afraid to go there. He was afraid to go to Judea. Mm. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. You see, Joseph, there was a fear came. He thought, well, where do I go? And then God came into his fear and spoke and said, listen, go, go to Galilee. Yes. Go to Galilee. So he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. Again, so was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Everything was prophesied. <laughs> Everything. And I love it that in John's Gospel, in that very first bit where we said, the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness has not overcome it. And that kind of like, thinking about that, and thinking about our walk with God, and, and how, we, how we continue, you know, to let the light shine, to, to follow God, is amazing. Yes. Is amazing. And it took me to... Um, Ephesians chapter 6. Because Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul is writing his letter to, obviously, the church in Ephesus. And the Apostle Paul, he's, um, he's trying to encourage the church. Because darkness is coming at them from all sides. They're being persecuted. They're being, you know, they're being arrested. Darkness is coming at them from all angles. And Paul says this to him, he says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Because the light cannot be put out, can't be extinguished. Put on the full armour of God. And this is what we need to do in our walk with God, to put on the full armour of God. So that we can take our stand, so we can stand against the devil's schemes, against the schemes of the darkness. The darkness will try to overcome us. You do know that, don't you? He never stops. Mm. He never stops. He'll always try and make you turn your back on God. He'll always try and make you find another way. He'll always say, unless it's just me. He'll always say, you know, he'll bring doubt. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? He'll always come at us. Always, always, always. But this is good for me to know that the light of the world lives in me. And the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. Lives in me. Amen. It said, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark, dark world. Mm. The darkness has not overcome it. This dark world. And against the spiritual force of evil in the heavenly realms. Why is Christmas an amazing time to celebrate? Why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? Because darkness has not overcome it. Amen. And the same yeah. Jesus that lives in us. Darkness can't overcome it. might feel like it can sometimes. And it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Sometimes it does. So we need to remind ourselves. And we need to stand firm then, Paul says. Stand firm with the belt of truth around your waist. And I like the belt of truth. I kind of, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And I kind of think, you know, I've got Jesus tied right tight around my, my waist. Oh, yeah. He's a belt of truth. Yeah. He holds everything together. Holds my pants up. <laughs> and the name of Jesus. Holds everything together. The belt of truth. <laughs> praises. Praises. Get some praises. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The breastplate of righteousness. And we know this. 
And I don't know if I, you know you know this, and I know this, but do you just forget it sometimes? Yes, that's right. Mm. Yeah. I, I also think that that's why God wants us to go on studying, you know, every day. You know, when, when he spoke to the Israelites, he said, uh, read the law, meditate on it, day and night, day and night. Just get it into us. Trust God. Follow Jesus. Believe in him. And he said, I'm praying in the Spirit on all occasions yeah. with all kinds of prayers and requests. I said it before and I'll say it again and I always believe and I'm always going to say this, there's a miracle in this room Amen. right here, right now. Whenever we come into the presence of God, there's a miracle waiting to happen. Whenever, whenever we come into the presence, we just have to let faith arise, let the, realize that the darkness can't crush us anymore, that the light has overcome all the darkness. The light has overcome all the darkness. And this is our Lord Jesus. Amen. So there's a miracle. I wonder if it's your miracle. I wonder if it's my miracle. Well, there's a miracle. And by faith, just we're not, we're not coming to man to, to find our miracle. We're coming to the light of the world. Hallelujah. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the one that creates miracles. The whole Christmas story, the whole birth of Jesus, everything, everything was orchestrated by God. He's covered everything, every angle. Even when Herod tried to dis even when Herod went out in the darkness and tried to destroy everybody to get at Jesus, to get at that little baby boy. And he didn't do it because God is always one step in front. God's always in front. God always knows. And God knows our situation as well. You know, when we're here and we're in, in a difficult situation, one step forward a week from now. Who knows, it could just be completely different, completely. It could Hallelujah. be a suddenly happen Hallelujah. in one day. There could be a suddenly happen in this afternoon. Hallelujah. A suddenly can happen in a moment. Yes. We, have to keep, we have to keep pushing forward, amen? Yeah. Keep going, keep hungry and thirsty. Hungry yes. and thirsty. And I believe we can get hungry and thirsty and believe that it won't be by persuasive words no. or no. amazing preaching. Not that you'll get much of that from here, but you'll get some there again. But it won't be by that. It won't be. The greatest preacher on earth, whoever that might ever be, he's not the one that would bring the miracle. It's by a demonstration of the Spirit's power. power. That's right. So what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians. It's a demonstration of the Spirit's power. A demonstration of the Spirit's power. And that's what I'm praying for. And I believe that the Lord asked us to prepare this room for a purpose yes. and for a reason. Amen. And that's what the reason, the reason the room's here is because God said, prepare a room. What God does next, I don't know, but he keeps speaking miracles. Yes. I believe miracles are going to start coming out of this place. Yeah. I really, really do. Hallelujah. Amazing Hallelujah. miracles. Hallelujah. I do. Amen. And I believe that this demonstration of the Spirit's power is going to be so great that we'll be amazed. We'll be amazed. Yes. And then the God, the light will shine so bright that people will be attracted to it. It's just a matter of time. Keep believing. Yeah. Keep trusting. Yeah. Keep pushing forward. Because I'm telling you now, it is going to happen. It is going to happen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, leave this place encouraged. Leave this place talking to yourself. The light of the world the is in me. Amen. Make it so. Amen? God bless you. Hallelujah.